Hi gang! This is part 5 of making my BB-8 droid, version 2. And in this video, I'll show you how I made it look like BB-8, including adding some LEDs to the head. The head is still based on this 8-inch styrofoam hemisphere from Michaels, an art store. Notice that the BB-8's head is a half sphere only to around here, where it has a base that's straight for a bit, and then has this upside-down cone section. That's the stuff I need to add. I found this lightweight yet sturdy styrofoam packaging material that has a good area to use as the base of the head. First I trace out the circumference of the head. Then for a harder surface I tape a piece of plastic to the center and find the exact center using my compass. Next I mark the hole that I'll cut all the way through. Then I mark another that'll be the bottom of the cone. Using an X-Acto knife blade I carefully cut out the base. Then I trim off any extra pieces from the packaging. It turns out that filing also works to remove material. I next mix up a batch of the flour and water paste normally used for paper mache. I spread it on the styrofoam on the base and below the hemisphere where I'll be joining the two. Then I put them together and fill in a big gap. Luckily I have a board with a hole in the middle so I put that on top along with some books to press the parts together. After leaving it overnight it's all solidly glued together. So I start filing the edge of the base to line up with the hemisphere. Then I arrange the books to hold it sideways while I fill in the big gap some more. I'm not sure I like the use of flour and water paste for this part as it's very hard to sand. Maybe polyfiller or something else would have been better. Next I have to carve the upside down cone. I start by measuring and marking a line for the top of the cone. And then carefully cutting out the cone using a coping saw. And finally filing it. Next I cut out the hole all the way through for accessing the inside. And here it is so far. To get the dimensions I took snapshots from various videos and brought them into a drawing program. Open Office Draw in this case. I knew my styrofoam head was 8 inches in diameter and that this corresponding rectangle is 6.58 units wide. Therefore to get how wide the radar eye should be I multiply the width of this rectangle, 1.77 units, by 8 and divided by 6.58, which tells me the eye should be 2.15 inches, and so on for anything else. I then started designing what's being called the radar eye, the holo projector, and one of the antennas in Blender, a free 3D modeling and animation software. Then I printed them out at the University of Ottawa's Makerspace. The files for doing this are also on my website on the page about detailing BB-8. The radar eye comes in two pieces. An LED will shine through a hole in this slot. There are actually six holes in the 3D model, but for some unknown reason the 3D printer filled them in, but left enough of an outline for me to be able to make pilot holes for drilling in their middles. But before going further I decide to work on the transparent cover. I found this screen cleaning thing at a dollar store, and the packaging is around the right size. So I remove a bit of the packaging and trim it a tiny bit at a time while trying to fit it. I find that the sides of this piece stick out too much, so I file them a bit. Eventually, after much trimming and trying, it finally snaps into place. Before painting, I roughen it using sandpaper. I then paint on a layer of gesso as a primer. While I'm at it, I 3D printed the small antenna as two parts, so I use super glue to glue the two PLA parts together. Then I paint that and the holo projector part with gesso too. That's followed by this acrylic paint. It's silver but should probably be gray, but I use it anyway. I paint the outer part of the radar eye that color and also the holo projector. The inside of the holo projector is painted black. Next I super glue the radar eye pieces together. After drilling two mounting holes, I put some lightweight nylon bolts from Home Depot. I make some matching holes in the head and test the fit. Using a file I flatten where the radar eye will go. I've made some washers out of scrap plastic and use them and some nuts to bolt the radar eye in place. A little black paint makes the heads of the bolts invisible. For the holo projector I cut the head off another nylon bolt. I use some hot glue to hold that in place. With another hole and some carving in the styrofoam I put it in place. And with another makeshift plastic washer and a nut I bolt it on. To hold the antenna on, I found this plastic tube from a hobby store that it fits in snugly. I have another bolt that I've cut the head off of. It's a little too big for the tube, so I file it smaller. Using super glue, I glue the bolt into the tube. On the real promotional BB-8, the antenna goes here on the gray stripe. So using a vertical measurement from the bottom of the head, I verify I have a location above the radar eye. And then I mark the bottom of the stripe where the antenna will go. And then I mark the top of the stripe. Looking at the head straight on, I then guess where the antenna should go in the horizontal direction. Just a little to the left of the top of the radar eye. Finally I drill a hole straight down. I make a base for the antenna using some plastic. The hole needs to be longer than it is wide, since it'll be attached to the antenna at an angle. I glue the antenna to its base. 
To lower the base, I carve a place for it, until it's flush with the surface of the head. I also flatten out a place inside that's perpendicular to the bolt. And using another homemade washer and a nut, I bolt the antenna in place. And here it is so far. Next comes this circle below the radar eye. I found this pen cap that's the right size. I cut a piece of it out and unblock the end. I have this plastic tube from a hobby store that fits snugly inside and cut a piece and use it to hold in place this suitable gray plastic from a plastic bag to form the translucent part that the light shines through. To test it, I've thrown together this LED circuit. It has a 3.7 volt, 2000 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery, a 390 ohm resistor, and a 20,000 millicandela white LED. Inserting the LED into the tube, I find how far the LED needs to be from the bag material to be bright, but without making a bright spot on the gray material. After cutting some notches in the tube, I use a tie strap to hold the LED in place. And here it is after adding a little gray acrylic paint and soldering some wires to the LED. I drill a hole for it in the head. And here it is in place and lit up. Next up are these lit rectangles. I start with a thin sheet of plastic from a hobby store. For the light blue material that the light shines through, I found this blue on an apple bag. I cut and super glue a piece to the thin plastic. I then cut up some thicker plastic for the sides. I need the inside to be reflective, so I attach some aluminum tape, available at hardware stores, to all the inside surfaces. I attach edges all around. And here's the end result with an LED inserted. And this is the other one with a slightly darker colored blue material. I cut holes for them in the head and insert them. It'll look a lot better shortly. Only one light in the radar eye ever lights up in the actual BB-8, so I finally drill that hole for the radar eye. I also drill some additional holes behind the radar eye, above and below the LED, and insert some short screws into them, but leaving some threads exposed. I don't have a bright red LED right now, so I use a marker to color this one red. I had tried various red packaging material, but the results weren't bright enough. After inserting the LED in the hole, I use a wire to hold it in place. Testing at various angles, it still looks white from the front, so coloring it doesn't really work. Of course I had to make a hole in the head for the new stuff behind the eye, and with some wires soldered to the LED. But here it is all back in place. Last part to attach to the outside of the head is this other antenna. To make it, I have a nylon bolt, a bunch of plastic tubes that fit into each other, and a steel wire with some insulation from a black wire on one end. I start by cutting the tubes to various lengths, and then cutting the head off the bolt. Next, I file the end of the bolt, so that I can super glue it into the biggest tube. Then the other tubes are glued and slid into place, ending with pushing the wire into the smallest tube. After a bunch of sanding, it has a nice tapered look. I paint it with black acrylic paint, and it's done. To figure out where it'll go, I notice that it's just below this orange stripe and that the bottom of the orange stripe is just below the top of the radar eye. I mark the height on the back, then I eyeball where it should go from the front. I then drill it with a drill bit that's one size smaller than my quarter inch antenna and bolt, so that it'll be a snug fit. Just as with the other antenna, I make a flat spot inside. And with a homemade plastic washer and a nylon nut, I bolt it in place. And here it is, with all the head pieces in place before smoothing and painting. Before painting it, I have to smooth it out, so I apply some polyfilla to all the dents and holes. Once that's dry, I sand it, but it doesn't work well at the boundaries where the filler meets the styrofoam. Some of it just sands away completely. So I take a tip from Kurt Zimmerman, who, in the BB-8 Builders group forum, showed how he used a lightweight spackle to completely cover a foam head. Note that I wet my spatula with water to further smooth the spackle. Sanding it turns out to be super easy. I paint it with white gesso. Then I start in on the details, starting with taping for the bottom ring. I take some more measurements from various BB-8 photos. For some things, like how far these lines should be from the eye, I just rough it. With some of it drawn out, I then start painting. I later find that doing it carefully by hand works better than taping it for getting sharp edges, as the paint leaks under the tape due to the not perfectly smooth surface. For the thin gray lines on white background, I draw using a pencil. But for this thick black line, I use a marker. I was in a rush to get this done for Maker Faire, but given what I learned, I may do it again later, making sure it's smoother before painting. I haven't found a suitable lens for the holo projector, so I cut out some balsa wood. And with it in the projector, I sand it to shape. Next, I paint it black, and then spray on some clear coat to make it shinier. And here it is in place. To hold the circuit for the LEDs in the head, I've cut this piece of thick plastic from a hobby store and threaded some wires through it. I attach a terminal strip first, and then put a 220 ohm resistor. That's followed by the connector for plugging in the battery, and lastly, the battery itself. Then I gather up all the positive wires going to the LEDs and connect them, followed by all the negative wires. Plugging the connector into the battery, 
the LEDs turn on. That all just sits in the head, kept in by the head support. And here it is all lit up. Next is to paint the ball. To do that I spray on a few coats of white Krylon primer paint, doing it outside for ventilation. It takes a few days for all the coats, but then I reassemble the two hemispheres and find that they've deformed, just as my older cardboard ones did. So I put them in a frame for a few days, compressing them back into shape. Then I draw the first circle at the seam, doing both the outer and inner edges. Rotating the ball around, I then draw the second circle on the opposite side. I take a lot of care to find the poles of the ball. And then, with the help of some marks at the seam, I draw a longitudinal line all the way around. That then allows me to measure and mark where the other circles will go. I then draw them. Finally, I use a template I made to draw in the notches that extend inward for each circle. And here are the circles all drawn. I paint them with an orange acrylic paint, found in a dollar store. The edges don't matter much, as they'll be drawn over later. I end up putting three coats. Next, I use a black colored pencil to draw the dark lines around the edges. I rub it with my finger to give it a weathered look. After that, I use templates from the BB-8 Builders Group as guides for drawing the outlines for the details in the circles. And then I fill them in with a few coats of gray acrylic paint. And then adding all the other details. For some details, I actually scrape away paint. Next, I draw the lines between the circles, and then the rivets on either side of each line, as well as some rivets on the circles notches. Using another template, I draw the tabs outside the circles, and then finally all the miscellaneous details on the circles themselves. To further weather it, I mixed up various acrylic paints with a lot of water, and using a paper towel, I sponge it on, mostly around the lines between the circles. Then I clean it up with a clean paper towel. The gray duct tape leaves a residue if it's on for too long, so I scrape it off. And lastly, to protect it all, I spray on several coats of Krylon clear paint. Time to put it in the ball. From a post in the BB-8 user group by another BB-8 builder named Cory Passion, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, I learned that this transparent duct tape works great. And here's the end result. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel for more fun videos like this. If you want to help support these videos, then you can through my Patreon page. Or you can go to my website and donate any amount you want. And if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, share with your social media, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!